Let's get into me a little dog. Hi guys. And Lord, will this ever end? We are looking at a frosty night. A frosty night here <clears throat> in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. And bugs in a jar farm where right about the freezing mark, uh, going into Memorial Day weekend, Thursday, May 25th, <clears throat> 2023. So tomorrow is the grand opening of the 2023 season of the Bugs in a Jar Airbnb and Hip Camp. So uh, I hope you guys can make it for a visit this summer, but uh, before I dive into my weekend of madness with uh, my uh, <laughs> my visitors, uh, do what I try to do every day, and that's chronicle the collapse of a planet. Uh, so I was thinking of doing this a riff on what I might be the Doomer port headline of the year from Live Science, climate change could trigger gigantic deadly tsunamis from Antarctica. New study warns. There you go. Gigantic deadly tsunamis heading your way from Antarctica, but I think the title says it all. So we're just going to get into, uh, we're going to hear from the Pope for a minute and then go into, uh, we're going to go from the Pope to Chevron Oil Company uh, here in the mainstream media. Before we dive in, as I begin all my rants, we're going to hear from a fellow, a clergyman and economist. This is what a clergyman and economist named Otto Diedrich Lucken, who lived from 1719 to 1790, had to say about overpopulation. A clergyman and economist. There you go. <clears throat> Take it away, Otto. Since the circumstances of the globe is given, and does not expand with the increased number of its inhabitants, and as travel to other planets thought to be inhabitable has not yet been invented, since the Earth's fertility cannot be extended beyond a given point, and since human nature will presumably remain unchanged so that a given number will hereafter require the same quantity of the fruits of the earth for their support now. And as their rations cannot be arbitrarily reduced, it follows that the proposition that the world's inhabitants will be happier the greater the number cannot be maintained. For as soon as the number exceeds that which our planet, with all its wealth of land and water, can support, they must starve one another out not to mention other necessarily attendant inconveniences, to wit, a lack of the other comforts of life. Wool, flax, timber, fuel, and so on. But the wise creator who commanded men in the beginning to be fruitful and multiply did not intend, since he sets limits to their habitants and sustenance, that multiplication should continue without limit. 
There you go, and we're going to go from Otto. Of course, he was saying this when the population of this planet was about one-tenth what it is now. And uh, speaking of all of these people talking about uh, what God intended, I love this new one from uh, <clears throat> the Pope. Enough! With fossil fuels, Pope says in latest climate appeal, yes, the world must rapidly ditch fossil fuels and end, quote, the senseless war against creation, Pope Francis said on Thursday in a fresh plea over climate change that called on people to repent for their, quote, ecological sins. Yes. Uh, what I loved in here uh, <laughs> is this paragraph. <clears throat> Quote, the unrestrained burning of fossil fuels and the destruction of forests are pushing temperatures higher and leading to massive droughts, Francis said, also criticizing oil and gas fracking and what he called, quote, unchecked mega mining projects. Yes, this guy, uh, you, you know, um, spreading, you know, promoting uh, the bright green lie of all that, you know, he's talking about uh, how we need to ditch fossil fuels, you know, failing to mention that if we ditch fossil fuels within about six months, half of the planet will be dead. So maybe that is a good reason to ditch fossil fuels. But of course, it, you know, he's talking about replacing them with green, clean energy while at the same time decrying, is that the word? Decrying the, uh, quote, unchecked mega mining projects that are part of, a, a, you know, fossil fuels, the fracking and, and all the rest. Uh, but of course, what uh, this clueless moron Pope Francis completely fails to realize, as 99% of the clueless morons on the planet preaching the end of fossil fuels, and I agree we need to get rid of fossil fuels, is that if you want to see unchecked mega mining projects, okay, get the world off fossil fuels, and you will think uh, you will think back on those halcyon days of oil drilling and fracking uh, what oil drilling and fracking are doing to this planet it, it, it is a tiny shadow okay uh, of what is coming down the pike the unchecked mega mining projects that are going to be uh, the, the number one uh, knock-on effect of this, you know, the bright green lie of this of this bullshit energy transition. Uh, I have heard from the mining uh, corporations themselves that the transition from fossil fuels, I have heard that in the next 30 years there is going to be 10 times the amount of mining, uh, lithium, nickel, copper, uh, all, all of this crap to save the planet from fossil fuels. And obviously Pope Francis has no clue, no clue what an unchecked mining, pro mega mining project looks like. But he's getting ready to find out uh, when the stupid idiot uh, gets exactly what he wishes for.
be careful what you wish for. But uh, anyway, enough of the Pope. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go over to Quartz Magazine. And, and I don't know why they're picking on Chevron uh, Corporation. My, I'm going to take a, just this is a, a wild guess that you could say whatever is true for Chevron. You know, it's true for all of the rest of these scumbags. It's true for Exxon Mobil and Shell and all the rest of them. But anyway, they're going to pick on uh, <clears throat> Chevron here. So we're going to get an education about the bright green lie of the bullshit notion of carbon offsets. Is there anybody on the planet still believing this greenwashing horse shit? This corporate greenwashing, unadulterated horse shit about this carbon offsetting, saving the planet. So we're going to let Quartz Magazine, and good for Yahoo News, right here in the mainstream media today running this article, Take it away, Quartz, and uh, go uh, pick on Chevron. Just kind of throw a dart and pick on Chevron. <clears throat> New research published on Wednesday, May 24th, by Corporate Accountability. There's, don't you love that name? Corporate Accountability, a nonprofit corporate watchdog has found that 93% of Chevron's carbon offset programs between 2020 and 2022 have not led to reductions of greenhouse gas emissions. The report says that Chevron has exaggerated its investments in green energy and that the emissions of some of its supposedly green projects have increased in recent years. Additionally, a, a major portion of the projects backed by Chevron, which focus on forests, plantations, and hydroelectric dams, are both ineffective and cause harm by being linked to claims of abuses of local communities or environmental degradation in the developing countries where the projects are based. Hmm. The report also found that some of the carbon capture projects used by Chevron are missing their targets by as much as 50%. My guess is 95%. Okay, so now let's move on to the chapter, Oil Companies Are Driving Climate Solutions That Do Little to Fix Climate Change. Wow, imagine that that oil companies are driving climate solutions that do little to fix climate change. Okay, for those of you who uh, don't listen to uh, Pope Francis, you might not realize this, that the single largest cause of climate change is burning fossil fuels. As the world turns towards climate action, Fossil fuel companies like Chevron and, and all the rest of them uh, have tried to have it both ways by pushing purported climate solutions that, wow, allow them to keep extracting and bringing fossil fuels to market. Huh, imagine that. The goals are, you know, the goals uh, that we just talked about, are mutually exclusive, and the methods to reach those goals, primarily carbon offsets and carbon capture and storage technologies, are so far 
proving to be better at justifying fossil fuel use than reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Hmm, imagine all this. I, you know, I never would have thought of this without corporate accountability. And again, I don't know why they're picking on Chevron. And uh, right next to this uh, article, uh, if you enjoyed this article, you can check out why Chevron's stock is rising today. Hmm. <laughs> You know, it makes perfect sense right here why Chevron's stock is rising today. Okay, this is part of the reason. Carbon offsets have long been under scrutiny for failing to reduce carbon emissions while providing a veil for corporations to claim that their continued emissions are paired with a project that is good for the environment. A January report by The Guardian, which I'm pretty sure I remember covering, a January report by The Guardian found that more than 90%, 90% of the rainforest offset credits provided by Vera a leading offset firm that provides a third of Chevron's credits did not represent real carbon reductions. Hmm. A new set of guidelines released in March by, I love the name of this place, the Integrity Council for the Voluntary Carbon, carbon Market. There you go a global governance organization. Mm. A global governance organization disappointed experts by not going far enough to identify and exclude the most worthless offsets. Carbon capture projects fall far short of what would be required to contribute to reducing emissions in line with the Paris Agreement goals in 2022, according to the International Energy Agency, the world emitted 36.8 billion metric tons of CO2. Currently, operational carbon capture projects sequester 44 million metric tons of CO2 per year, otherwise known as 0.1.2%. 0.12% of total emissions and a number that the IEA does not expect will increase before 2030. There you go. So anyway, uh, I guess uh, Pope Francis uh, needs to uh, read Quartz magazine. All right. And then the uh, <coughs> the Guardian has almost an identical article, but I do see that Chevron is bailing out of the Congo. Uh, smart move. Chevron launches sale of its Congo oil assets. Chevron has launched a sale process for its oil and gas assets in the Congo as the U.S. energy giant continues to focus operations on newer and more profitable production industry sources said the Congo assets could fetch up to one and a half billion dollars 
so Chevron's production in the Congo fell by around 40% from 2019 to 31,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day last year. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, getting the hell out of Africa. Chevron sold oil fields in Nigeria in 2021 and is now exploring for new oil and gas resources in Namibia. That's pretty, uh, pretty weird. As uh, long as we're over there in Congo, as uh, Chevron is bailing from Congo, Congo to hike stake in copper and cobalt ventures with China. Do you think so? So Chevron is bailing on the Congo with its oil drilling and China is teaming up with the Congo for copper and cobalt. Part of that clean green energy. Uh, <laughs> Chevron out, China copper and cobalt in. The Congo, uh, one foot forward, two foot back, or is it one foot back, two foot forward? Anyway, the little dog, he is putting his foot forward and saying bye bye, wrap it up, Pop. And the big weekend starts tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to hide anywhere to do any rants because uh, I have to go put on my uh, super host hat. My WASF super host hat here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, and pretend like it's just uh, just like normal times while I still can. Right now I got to turn the heater back on because it's freezing on May 25th. My guys. Okay, little dog. Did you survive that? Ugh!